letting you creep by night. The Blue Network presents the international star of stage and screen, the mastery of mystery, Boris Karloff, in Creep by Night. How do you do? This is Boris Karloff, joining with you once again for another exploration into the unknown darkness of the human mind. Tonight, our story illustrates in terrifying terms the oft-repeated theme of this program. There is no mystery greater than the mystery of the mind. It is for you to decide whether these weird and ghastly happenings were a figment of man's imagination or a tragic reality beyond man's understanding. Creep by Night presents Boris Karloff as Loomis Horton in The Hunt. Our scene is the Horton Farm, 50 acres of rich grazing pasture almost on the edge of the Louisiana bayous, the legendary swampland that for centuries was the spawning ground of black magic and voodoo. The night is warm and dark, with heavy silence broken only by the hum of insects, the chirping of crickets, and the occasional deep-throated croak of a bullfrog off in the swamp. Suddenly, the shadowed outline of a human figure appears at the edge of a cypress grove behind the weather-beaten Horton house, and a soft whistled signal rides the still night air. For a long moment, there is no response. Then, a door at the rear of the house opens quietly, and a girl crosses to the cypress grove, her eyes searching the darkness. Yes? Right here, Julie. Jeff, you shouldn't have come. He didn't want his black needs tonight. I've got to go right back in. He'll kill me if he finds me here. He won't kill nobody. I'm getting fed up with him ruining your life, Julie. Got a mind to tell him a thing or two. It won't do any good, Jeff. What rights he got keeping you from getting some fun out of living? That's what I want to know. He's my brother. That don't give him no right to pin you up. You ain't one of his stinking sheep. Jeff, please, not so loud. He'll hear you. I don't much care if he does. Please, Jeff. I'll be the one to suffer. Oh, I'm sorry, Julie. Only it makes me mad clean through when I think of him treating you the way he does. I want to marry you, Julie, and take you away from here. There's stories going around the village. What do you mean, Jeff? I don't like to say it, Julie, but... Uh, the folks are talking about your brother, Loomis. Talking? I don't understand. Well, Buck Peebley and Bill Mason come through here night four last hunting coon. Said they saw Loomis out in the east pasture, digging a grave. A grave? Yeah. She's burying something. Do you know what it was, Julie? Got any idea? No. I don't, Jeff. But... But what? Oh, I shouldn't be telling you this, Jeff. It won't go no further, Julie. Tell me. Hope to die. Well, I... I heard Loomis talking with the hired man. I heard him say something comes out of the swamp at night. Out of the swamp? Yes. They don't know what it is. But come dark, Loomis hardly never goes without his shotgun. Uh, sound like voodoo to me, Julie. i got to take you away from here. It ain't healthy. Oh, you can't, Jeff. Not till I'm 18. Not for two months yet. How am I going to sit around for two months thinking about you shut up in a house with that crazy man? you got no right to say that, Jeff. I've got every right. Digging graves at night. Burying Lord knows what and talking about things coming out of the swamp. I ought to say something to him about all this. You can say it right now. Oh. Uh, evening, Miss Horton. Get back into the house, Julie. Hold on a minute, Mr. Horton. Get into the house. I'm going, Louis. Bye, Jeff. Julie, wait. Let her go. You got no right treating her like you do. I got a right to do as I please. She's my sister and she's underage. Now get off my land and don't come back. If I catch you here again, I'll horse whip you. I don't scare easy, Mr. Horton. No. Perhaps I got something in the house that may change your mind. 
I'll give you five minutes to get off my land. I'll leave when I'm good and ready, and not before. I'm going back indoors for a shotgun. And if you're still here when I come out again, you'll get a load of buckshot. Remember that. Dirty low-down skunk. Just let me catch him once off his own land. Just once. I'll beat his ugly head off. What's that? Sounds like a wolf. Only there ain't no wolves out here. No. There ain't wolf crowd. Come around. Come closer. I'm sneaking through the cypress crow. I wonder what it is. Maybe I better... There's not much I can tell you, Professor Taylor, except that it happened five weeks ago. The state police moved in on the case right after the boy's body was found. Frankly, we didn't get very far. It's still an unsolved mystery. I see. Uh, you don't know, of course, why I'm here, Sergeant. Well, all I know is we had a letter from the state university saying you were coming down to do some research on the case. Yes, yes, exactly. Now, as I understand it, Sergeant, uh, the boy's throat was considerably lacerated. Worse than that. There wasn't any throat left. You're convinced it was an animal? Well, what else could it be? No human could let the throat open like that. Were there any tracks? No, and the ground was pretty hard. And what stopped as cold was, our bloodhound couldn't pick up a trace of scent. No animals then, anyhow. Uh, how about human? Well, only the Hortons and the hired man, Andrew. They don't count. Thing happened on Horton land, so naturally you'd expect it. Yes, 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 of course. Uh, tell me, uh, this Horton you mentioned... Uh, Loomis Horton, his name is. Uh, does he keep a dog... A savage dog? No, he won't allow one on the place. He investigated the dog angle, but there uh, isn't one like that in the whole parish. Uh, curious. Very curious. Uh, where is the Horton Farm located, Sergeant? About seven miles out of town. County Road. Did the boy live or work there? No, no. According to Horton's story, Jeff got a little strong on young Julie. Uh, she's Horton's sister. Jeff left about 9.30, and a few minutes later, Horton heard him screaming for help. Horton ran out the back of the house, found Jeff at the edge of a cypress grove. So him dead. Mm-hmm. I'd like a little talk with this Horton, uh, Sergeant. Well, no, I don't know. He's a queer duck. Doesn't take much to strangers. And it doesn't take much to anybody, as a matter of fact. Really? Well, he puts in most of his time looking after his farm and his sheep. Keeps one hired man. Between the two of them, they manage pretty well. Then there's his young sister, the girl Jeff Tuttle was calling on. He doesn't let her out of his sight. Keeps pretty much cooped up in the house. Uh, nice looking girl, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, would it be possible to drive out to the Horton farm tonight, Sergeant? Let's well, see. Uh, ten minutes to eight. It's dark by the time we get there. Well, you're not afraid of the dark, are you? I'm not afraid of anything I can see. Let's go. Let's go. Much farther, Sergeant? Um, about a mile. Professor, look at that. Look at what? They're ahead crossing the road. Is that a dog? It's good. A grief. Speed up, Sergeant. Hurry before it's gone. Look how the eyes gleam in our headlights. A yellow fire. That dog is the biggest one I ever saw. I'm afraid it's no dog, Sergeant. Quick, swing to the left. Keep your lights on it. Yeah. You notice anything? Starting around, heading for the Cypress Grove. Yes, but notice the color, that peculiar gray. Has it gone? And the fangs, the pointed ears, the way it moved. Did it remind you of a wolf? Let's go after it. Uh, no, no, no. Wait, Sergeant. No use. Not in this darkness. We'll never find it in that thick grove. Uh, guess you're right. You really think it was a wolf? Uh, I said it reminded me of one. Well, we don't we don't have wolves in this section, Professor. Uh, yes, yes, I know. Uh, Sergeant, I think it's time I told you the kind of research I intend doing. Uh, do you know what lycanthropy is? Uh, no, I can't say I do. Well, it's a form of madness, a disease of the mind. Those who are afflicted with it imagine they've turned into wild animals. Mm. They develop a taste for blood and often commit violence when the spasm seizes them. 
Once the seizure is over, they return to normalcy with no knowledge of what occurred. Sounds pretty horrible. Yes, it is horrible. You understand there's no physical change except the deepening of the voice, as far as we know. Uh, what do you mean, as far as you know? Well, some authorities believe the disease may be so deeply rooted in certain human beings that when the spasm seizes them, their actual physical appearance is altered. They take on the form as well as the habits of wild beasts. They are called werewolves, men who turn into wolves. Right. Well, what's the matter, Sergeant? Why did you jump? It uh, just kind of hit me. Bloodhounds not finding any animal scent, and, and, and that gray thing we just saw run across the room. Uh, we mustn't reach conclusions, Sergeant. No true werewolf has ever been found, although there are many alleged eyewitness accounts claiming that such creatures have been seen, particularly in the Balkan countries of Europe. Thus far, though, we have no positive scientific proof that werewolves really exist. Mm -hmm. Hope they don't. So do I, Sergeant. I devoutly hope so. But the case of this young man whose throat was uh, torn out presents some aspects I'd like to investigate. I'm uh, beginning to see what you're thinking about. I suggest we drive on to the Horton Farm, Sergeant. <laughs>
Might even risk going into the swamp. Wolf or whatever it is, I won't be satisfied unless killed. Uh, I'm afraid I feel the same way, Sergeant. But before you organize a hunt, I wonder if it's safe to do a little snooping around here first. What do you mean? Something the girl said disturbed me. Something about lambs being killed. That's right. She, she did say she wanted to know if Horton's hired man had told him how many of her lambs were killed. Yes, and that may be significant. Werewolves are supposedly fond of slaughtering sheep. Uh, do you think we might talk with the hired man? Uh, chances are he's over in the barn. He's got a room there built out of a horse stall. You can take a look. Uh, it might be a good idea. It's over this way. Keep an eye out for Horton. He may come gunning for us. I don't trust him. Uh, I wouldn't be too concerned. Men who rant and roar are rarely dangerous. Wait a minute, Professor. Hold up. What is it? Somebody's hiding behind that bush on your left. All right. Come up with your hands up or I'll shoot. Want you, Sergeant? Yeah. Sign your flash on Professor. Yes, yes, certainly. There. What? Andrew. The hired man. I ain't doing nothing. Oh, Mr. I ain't. Why were you hiding behind that bush? Huh? I got scared. I heard voices in, in the gravelin. What were you doing out here? Burying the sheep and the lambs. What was that? Since when do you bury sheep and lambs? Well, these got to be. Mr. Holton said so. They run afoul of the critter. What critter? Only the Lord knows. We got strange goings on around here. Mighty strange. Always said it was too close to the bayou. Tain't healthy. Them swamps is full of things. Uh, where are you burying the sheep, Andrew? Right over there. Put him in the truck guard, Mr. Horton said. Good and deep. Uh, let's have a look at them, Sergeant. All right. See? There they are. Four ewes and two of Miss Julie's baby lambs. All with their throats torn out. Yeah. It's the critter from the swamps. Same one got Jeff Tuttle. Uh, when did this happen, Andrew? Mm, when the lambs got took night before last. We lost three ewes on Sunday and one last night. Has it ever happened before? Been going on most two years. Not regularly, though. Oh, months will go by and the critter don't show up. I took a shot at him once, it did. When was this? Last spring. Seen him behind the pump house. About to scare me half to death. The way his eyes glowed like the swamp fire. Wasn't time to draw no bead. Missed him, I guess. What did he look like, Andrew? Couldn't tell. Too dark. All I seen was his eyes glowing yellow. Might have been a sheep killing collar, though. Uh, one of them wild ones. Yeah, I very much doubt it. Uh, you're thinking of what we saw on the road tonight, uh, Professor? That uh, animal, whatever it was. Yes, if it was an animal. Why do you say that? Just look at these dead sheep. See where I'm flashing my light? Their back legs, eh? An ordinary animal would have nipped the legs and torn at their rumps. There's not a mark on them, except that their throats. Somebody's coming. Gravel's crunching. Must be Horton. Back behind the bush, Professor. We don't want him to catch us here. Don't say anything, Andrew. Keep low. Here comes. Right. Passed right on by the bush. How long is it going to take you to get those carcasses buried? All night? It ain't too easy in the dark. Do better with the lantern. I told you, no light. Hand me the other spade. I'll help you. Start shoveling. Hmm. Kind of like a shame to be putting good meat underground. How many times must I tell you it isn't good meat? Poison. Don't look poison. I say it is. And I'm warning you, shut your mouth about it. You hear that, Sergeant? Yes. I'm going to try to sneak back to the house and talk to the girl. You better come with me. All right. Keep down and follow the path, but stay off the gravel. I've got a hunch we're going to uncover something tonight. Yes, perhaps more than we realize. my own good. But that's not true. I know why he does it. Why? There's something going on. Something he doesn't want me to see. 
something that that isn't human. What do you mean, Miss Horton? I can't explain it, but well, I'm sure he murdered Jeff. I'm sure of it. There, there, now. What, uh, what makes you so sure, Julie? That night. The night Jeff was killed. Yes, go on. He sent me into the house. He was out there alone with Jeff. It was dark. Pitch dark. Go ahead, Julie. I heard their voices. My brother was shouting at Jeff. He said he'd kill him if he didn't get off the property. Uh, I think we'd better get her out of here, Sergeant. No, no, I can't go. I can't. Why not, Julie? He'll follow me. He'll do to me what he did to Jeff. Sergeant, someone's coming, huh? I hear footsteps on the front porch. I could get her out the back way. Take her to the car and wait for me there. You know where it's back. The county road right at the entrance of the farm. Yes, yes. Well, come, my dear. No, no. No, I'm afraid. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. Everything's going to be all right. Julie. Julie, where are you? She's gone, Horton. What are you doing here? I want to talk to you. Where's my sister? What have you done with her? I told you she's gone. Where is she? Answer me, where is she? You don't have to worry. She's safe. Safe? Safe? Tell me where she That's is. Take it easy, Horton. Take it easy. She's with Professor Taylor. We're going to take her away from here. You're going to take her away. <laughs> You're going to take her away. Over my dead body. Don't be a fool, Horton. Put that face down. Put it Julie. 